the protocol of adhesive preparation of already existing, already cured composites, how to connect to these already cured composites on different time distance, uh, cured few hours ago, cured few days, weeks or years ago. In all of, of these uh, circumstances we can form really strong connection between uh, existing composites and uh, the new portion um, without any weakness uh, between them. Uh, and the uh, quality of connection will be even stronger than adhesive force with enamel. Um, you can believe me, it works. Uh, empirically, it uh, um, shows um, uh, its effectiveness, but uh, also has a strong um, scientific basis under it. And now I'm gonna uh, explain it to you, but I don't want to give you just a sequence of manipulations, uh, step one, step two, and step three. Of course, I'll give you it later, but I, I would like to explain uh, you why uh, exactly you need to do it this way and not differently. What uh, processes uh, take place uh, on molecular level uh, uh, there on the surfaces when we apply composite, when we uh, cure it, and so on. Um, or what the reasons and mechanisms of bonding and so on. Uh, I uh, sure I'm sure that this chapter is uh, more than important for our work. Uh, it should be. Uh, a fundamental knowledge for everyone who start to work with composites uh, professionally, who want to um, do m money and who, who can, who who want to make uh, uh, you know a main clinical direction uh, of his work uh, as a solo. Uh, as a practitioner or uh, as, a, as a main treatment direction, clinical direction of the whole clinic, we need to know everything about composites. So that's why an example of video I'm going to show and explain it to you. So uh, this you can see uh, the scheme of composite before light curing, before polymerization. Uh, we can distinguish a few uh, things here. Wait, wait a second. Mm -hmm. Let me make the, the the picture size higher and this one smaller. Yes. Uh, you can see here uh, filler particles. Um, and uh, methacrylate based organic uh, matrix located uh, uh, around it. Uh, located around it. Uh, different types of uh, methacrylate uh, use uh, for different composites. Usually it's something like a combination, not only one. And different for uh, filler particles material. Uh, usually um, it, uh, we can say that this is uh, um, variations um, of silicon, of different silicon uh, filler particles. Um, the, uh, the more uh, bluish uh, the methacrylate based organic matrix will be on uh, the picture, the more cured uh, the matrix is. Okay, uh, this is just the legend of this particular presentation. So, at some point, uh, we, uh, just imagine that we uh, make an observation of the composite portion under very high magnification. At some point, after applying of the portion, we take a curing lamp and uh, cure the composite portion and uh, after it, after a polymerization and light curing, uh, composite starts to uh, become solid with uh, 
uh, with a thin layer of oxygen in, uh, inhibited composite on it. Um, light curing lamps give us uh, a blue light from 420 up to 570 uh, nanometers. Um, this is uh, the uh, diapason which uh, can be percepted uh, as a blue uh, di lighting diapason. Uh, and uh, these, exactly these uh, light waves with that mention length um, destroys the initiator polymerizations. Uh, Comfort Canon is one of the most uh, well known, but um, we can find not only Comfort Canon, but also another um, uh, polymerization initiators in composites. Uh, this light destroys uh, polymerization initiators uh, and uh, they uh, destroy with appearing of a huge amount of so-called free radicals. Free radical is the uh, atom with uh, one unpaired uh, electron uh, outside. And these uh, electrons, they, uh, these uh, atoms, uh, free radicals, start to react with molecules of methacrylate um, to join to them. Uh, and uh, this way provoke the um, polymerization chains appearing. Uh, Oxygen-inhibited oxygen layer uh, is the area where uh, the oxygen diffused in the surface of composites and oxygen inhibit, inhibit uh, the uh, curing process of methacrylate. Now let's look closer to the structure of cured uh, um, methacrylate matrix inside. Uh, what the uh, content of it? You can see that we uh, have many different things, not very understandable. Let's uh, uh, visualize some of them more clearly. Yellow particles uh, are unreacted monomer. Unreacted monomer presents uh, in quite big volume after light curing. Uh, the amount of uh, unreacted monomer uh, in first for uh, one and a half millimeter uh, is, uh, as you can see on the scheme, on the picture, uh, around 65%. Uh, so, 35% um, of the whole composite volume of the portion, uh, even in first uh, and second uh, millimeter, in the uh, depth of the highest intensity of light, uh, unreacted and uncured, it will be, it will become cured later on the stage of so-called dark phase of curing, uh, which takes place without light uh, just because of chemical uh, inertia of um, uh, uh, of uh, you know, all that chemical components of course previously mainly of, uh, um, fro of free radicals uh, but uh, the uh, percentage of unreacted mo monomer uh, is quite high also, we can find in uh, in just cured uh, composite portion frozen free radicals. These atoms uh, with uh, unpaired electron outside, um, of course, they cannot be uh, visualized. Uh, we cannot uh, find a picture. Uh, of them and the presence of them in composite uh, usually um, uh, may be uh, observed uh, differently by the measurement of mechanical resistance of the composite in time after curing. Um, for example, uh, uh, the the scientists uh, take. Uh, Mm, many numerous composite portions, cure them for some time, then uh, break them in the middle with uh, 
uh, measurement of the uh, the effort, the pressure which was necessary for break it. Uh, and uh, after, for example, 10 seconds, the uh, the effort was on one level. After uh, one hour, it was on another level, much higher than it was. Uh, and this way. Uh, scientists can find uh, and uh, measure and make a, uh, 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 can uh, can measure the amount of frozen free radicals in composites. The lifetime of the frozen free radicals uh, um, from a few uh, may be measured uh, from a few milliseconds to several months. Uh, the average period of uh, observed reactive, uh, um, reactively, uh, re reactive free radicals is 24 hours, uh, and we can say that uh, 24 hours is clinically uh, uh, that uh, period when we can find some. Uh, um, reactive uh, frozen free radicals but actually uh, looking on that uh, that scale uh, on that diagram we can see that first uh, uh, moments when uh, we can observe the um, qu quite intensive decreasing of uh, frozen free radicals volume uh, are periods around one or two or th maybe three hours after curing. So uh, usually I take this period, uh, two hours after curing, as the period uh, after which I need to, to uh, use a specific um, protocols of adhesive preparation of composite to connect to, to composite another portion. Before two hours after curing, uh, the composite full of frozen free radicals, accordingly full of unreacted monomers, many reactive, uh, reactively uh, capable um, elements inside uh, um, composite, and we can easily make a correction without any problems within first two hours. And actually, it um, approves uh, this um, idea proves uh, empirically. And practically, when uh, you, you probably also uh, paid your attention uh, when we make a correction of composite immediately or very soon after curing, uh, and uh, for example, central line. I always fucked up with central line, or, or almost always 90-80% of all cases uh, when I under isolation, I cannot understand whether central line uh, direct enough or not and centered good or not and uh, almost always i after removing the rubber dam and by looking on the, on the direction uh, of central line between central incisors uh, i i decided to a little bit um, <coughs> make a correction of it so i removed some some part of composite some volume from uh, proximal wall of one of the incisor with stripes, with metallic stripes, with uh, diamond uh, discs, uh, uh, release some free space, and with using of that uh, left sand matrix, I just reapplied layers. It's quite simple procedure, um, uh, and we usually do it immediately after curing, right after curing. And you probably notice if you overcome the same situation in your practice that uh, there are no uh, any problems uh, later, uh, pr problems of bonding between new portion and existed one, because um, uh, composites with which we make a, a connection, bonding, uh, applying um, a new portion uh, immediately or uh, on a short time distance from the initial curing. Um, uh, the composite is very active uh, and full of uh, active frozen free radicals. So two hours, in first two hours, we can make corrections easily without any additional 
uh, efforts uh, and uh, methods and affecting uh, var uh, variations of affecting just uh, as we used to. Um, uh, after two hours the composite not very active and we need to do something else. We need to apply some another additional um, factors and, and methods of affecting to uh, improve the, the surface connection. So now let's get back to the previous scale uh, of portion not on molecular level but uh, uh, on the level of particles uh, and the organic uh, cured uh, matrix and now I would like to tell you a few facts about oxygen inhibited layer uh, how what is it um, uh, what the parameters of it and how can we affect it or how we cannot so um, first thing uh, it not very important for us because it's not uh, affect uh, the quality somehow but uh, mm, some specialists wonder uh, the thickness of the oxygen inhibited layer uh, it varies from 6 up to 22.9 microns depends of uh, uh, the uh, particles density um, if um, uh, it's more dense uh, composite system like a regular composite the oxygen inhibit layer will be uh, thinner uh, in case of flowable composite where the content of particles less dense um, with less amount of particles inside um, or filler uh, the oxygen inhibit layer will be uh, thicker uh, will be bigger because uh, the uh, it has uh, you know more I would say free spaces uh, in the matrix to for oxygen uh, molecules to go through so uh, second thing a second sentence Oxygen inhibited layer forms as uh, a result of oxygen diffusion into the composite surface layer. Consequently, uh, long lived free radicals, we can distinguish free radicals into two types long lived and short lived. So, uh, long lived free radicals are uh, transformed uh, into peroxide. Uh, radicals which react weakly with methacrylate monomers. The other part, uh, and it turned namely short lived radicals, quickly dissociate. Uh, we can uh, observe uh, chemical dissoci dissociation of short lived radicals when they contact with oxygen. So uh, even uh, oxygen inhibited layer the name itself is not very correct actually because inhibited uh, means uh, reversibly uh, slowed uh, so uh, the chemical process is slowed down but actually uh, by the real um, uh, but, but the real re reactions which we can uh, find and observe into cured uh, composite uh, oxygen inhibited layer neutralized layer because uh, all the f almost all free radicals short lived and long lived are uh, neutralized by uh, oxygen some part of it uh, transformed into peroxide radical radicals uh, another part uh, purely uh, fully dissociate and cannot react at all uh, another thing another sentence uh, from the same uh, article the number of inactive polymerization initiators a uh, few of them AIBN alpha-dicatone and comforhenone um, that can lead 
to further uh, repolymerization of oxygen inhibited layer depends on the light exposure duration. Uh, the longer the light exposure, the less uh, the chance that oxygen inhibited layer will become solid during uh, for the light initiation, even uh, in an oxygen free environment. In other words, if we make uh, a curing for a long time, we uh, um, con uh, make uh, consume all the um, polymerization initiators in the oxygen inhibited layer. Uh, they all uh, destroy us on free radicals, and free radicals in turn uh, uh, start to react with the oxygen and uh, s start to be neutralized and cannot be uh, used further. And if we uh, cure quite a long time, what we can consider as long in these circumstances more than 5-7 seconds. If we cure surface and composite more than 5-7 seconds, we will not be able to cure uh, the layer, the oxygen inhibited layer, uh, even if we uh, apply uh, uh, glycerin gel. So, uh, uh, the reasonable question, how oxygen inhibited layer of uh, portions uh, inside of restoration uh, becomes cured? Because we can uh, make a, a light exposure of internal layers for a long time, 20 seconds, uh, 25 seconds. Even 15 seconds would be, will, will be enough uh, to destroy uh, all the um, polymerization initiators. So how the oxygen inhibited layer between layers inside uh, the composite uh, uh, becomes solid? And here is the, the answer. During the process of composite portions applying, the light curing of uh, oxygen inhibited layer is caused by the diffusion of uh, active free radicals from uh, from a new portion. So, uh, oxygen inhibited, inhibited layer on on the uh, portion located uh, inside of restoration becomes uh, cured because of uh, free radicals coming from new portion. If we have no any few uh, new portions, so uh, we uh, the oxygen inhibited layer will not uh, become uh, solid just uh, as it is uh, by using of uh, his own um, chemical uh, um, uh, chem chemical compound. And from all that sentences, uh, we can make. Uh, a conclusion that uh, the full recurring of oxygen inhibited layer in the method of post curing through a glycerin layer, um, glycerin gel, is impossible in overwhelming majority of clinical cases. The only uh, possible situation when we can really remove oxygen inhibited layer with using of glycerin is when we. Uh, apply a big portion of composite, cure it not for a long time, just a few seconds to make it a little bit solid, uh, uh, pre-cure it, and then apply glycerin gel and uh, a cure with the la uh, cure with lamp, um, uh, light it, light the portion th through the gel after a short time of curing. Uh, when we work with uh, posture teeth uh, in the method of occlu occlusal uh, uh, stamp, uh, these cases, this method allows us to do it, uh, allows us to remove oxygen inhibit layer through the final curing uh, of um, uh, uh, through the glycerin gel, or when we uh, make a uh, fixation of indirect uh, porcelain veneers on the surface of uh, tooth, uh, prepared prepare tooth uh, on the composite um, um, cementum. 
we uh, uh, apply the veneer, uh, the excesses of composite cementum uh, come out, uh, we remove them with the brushes usually, then we make a short curing for one, two, three seconds maximum, just to make the position of veneers more uh, reliable, um, more solid, and then we apply glycerin gel everywhere and cure through it. But in all other cases, uh, the oxygen inhibitor layer cannot become uh, can become cured uh, with this method. This is just a just a fake, just a very widespread fake. So let's go farther. Uh, now I would like to um, uh, I would like to uh, um, give you an understanding of factors uh, leading to the bonding uh, and adhesion formation between different substrates, not only from dentistry but from uh, any other uh, area. Um, so there are three main factors which may lead to uh, the bonding between something. First factor is the mobility of molecules and ability to wet the surface. Wetting the surface is actually a chemical term, meaning a very close distance between the molecules of one substrate and molecules of another substrate to each other. Such a short distance when the molecules may interrelate uh, and interact uh, chemically uh, and make a bonding between each other. Uh, the higher, the closer the mm, uh, state of the aggregate of, uh, of observed substrate to the liquid, the higher mobility of molecules and the higher ability to wet the surface. And uh, I always bring the following example. If we take uh, some two, two plastic two plastic uh, 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 subjects, solid plastic, uh, it's solid, the state of aggregate uh, solid, uh, the uh, wetting ability uh, almost on zero level and we cannot uh, connect them each other even if we will mechanically uh, try to, uh, uh, you know, uh, stimulate it. But if we take, uh, we'll take uh, a fire uh, and uh, we'll keep the plastic subjects uh, under it for some time, the state of aggregate of that mentioned plastic uh, subjects uh, uh, start to shift to the uh, direction of liquid and uh, the mobility of molecules uh, uh, becomes higher and we will be able to easily connect them to each other because it will wet each other, they will wet each other easily. So this factor is very important. Uh, another thing is the presence of uh, higher uh, energy uh, surface, or we can say the surface with the uh, um, big surface space. Surface space is one of the main factors which uh, uh, form the connection between different substrate and uh, the uh, situation which may um, um, uh, demonstrate us very brightly the 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 force uh, the importance of this factor of the presence of high energy surface is the the uh, ad adhesion on the surface of enamel after etching the surface of enamel of cross section of uh, prismatic enamel with uh, phosphoric acid we increase the surface space and uh, surface energy. Uh, more than 2,000 times than it was. And of course, uh, we, we make on the micro level, uh, micro gaps, then we apply adhesive uh, system which uh, fill these gaps uh, and uh, uh, initially the adhesive system uh, is, uh, is a liquid. 
uh, flowable, uh, easily uh, fill the gaps down and uh, uh, after curing it becomes solid. Just a micro retention on a micro level with the surface 2000 times higher than it was uh, is almost the only and the, the main factor which uh, forms the adhesion between uh, classic adhesive system of the fourth and fifth generation and uh, uh, enamel substrate. So this factor is also very important. And the third factor is the presence of reactive molecules. Um, uh, reactive molecules, uh, if uh, they are able to make a connection with the similar type of molecules, also very strong factor which can bring to the bonding and form the bonding. And the brightest situation, the best situation on which example we could uh, demonstrate the, the, um, uh, the importance of that uh, third factor is uh, the situation when we connect uh, one portion with another portion. So we have one portion with oxygen inhibited layer on the surface. This oxygen inhibited layer actually neutralized by the oxygen, uh, but it consists from unreacted monomers. Free, uh, free radicals, yes, they was uh, uh, during long time of, of curing, of light curing, they was absolutely neutralized and destroyed, dissociate by uh, the oxygen molecules. But the uh, frozen free radicals, uh, oh, sorry, um, no. unreacted monomers are absolutely normal. Uh, they can react with the same molecules and make a, a strong bonds between each other. But the only thing they needed is uh, active free radicals without uh, affecting by the air. So when we apply new portion, this new portion is quite soft. Uh, oxygen inhibited layer is also the same soft. They perfectly wet each other. Um, new portion consists from uh, methacrylate molecules uh, uncured. Uh, oxygen inhibited layer also consists from um, methacrylate unreacted uncured molecules. Uh, in the new portion, the amount of uh, free radicals is so high that they are easily diffused into oxygen inhibited layer of the previous portion uh, during the curing. And this way we can make a cohesive connection between them. Cohesive connection is the bondings between molecules of homogeneous substrate. Uh, adhesive is the connection between uh, um, uh, different substrates and not homogeneous um, and for making a, an adhesive connection we need to use some uh, surface agent one or another in different situations a different uh, surface um, uh, surface agent so this is the mechanism of connecting uh, portions uh, while applying if we need to make a correction uh, of composite in a short period, in that mentioned two hours after the curing, when composite uh, has big amount of unreacted monomers and frozen free radicals inside. Actually, we can do it easily without any specific addings, but <coughs> uh, the only problem uh, we can face with is the uh, uh, smear layer. Smear layer on the surface of composite which also appears after the any mechanical uh, effect on the surface uh, by rotary instruments especially. And uh, the problem of um, uh, smear layer on the surface of composite is that it actually uh, may be characterized as uh, the layer which uh, has no any structure it's just a dust uh, very dense dust 
on the surface consists from uh, particles of uh, silicon and uh, dust of, um, of methacrylate. Of course, it also consists, has some uh, amount of unreacted monomers uh, and frozen free radicals, but uh, the fact is that this layer has uh, um, no any structure inside it will um, be weak basing for, for further for the following connection that's why if we apply a methacrylate based hydrophobic filled resin um, we will make some uh, kind of uh, a c connection but it will uh, be characterized uh, by low intensity of adhesive bonds and the only thing we can make better we can improve uh, even within two hours uh, when we can make easily the correction almost without any uh, um, negative effects after is the removing of a smear layer because it has no structure I repeat uh, the only thing how can we remove it is use uh, ethanol. Uh, smear layer can be removed from composite by using of ethanol alcohol of 96 70 percent treatment with wiping of it. So we need to usually I take endodontic uh, syringe with endodontic um, uh, injector. Uh, apply f uh, ethanol from it on the surface for for some time, 10, 15, 20 seconds, and in the right hand, I keep a uh, micro brush and uh, actively uh, agitate it, uh, wipe it mechanically, and this way I we can remove. Uh, methacrylate uh, smear layer based on methacrylate and methacrylate may be dissolved by uh, native dissolvement which is ethanol one of it ethanol alcohol and if we apply um, modeling fill uh, not modeling fields uh, methacrylate uh, resin as the surface engine uh, on the surface of composite uh, with removed smear layer the adhesion connection will be better but what we gonna do what we what we uh, can do with the composite after two hours and farther in the perspective of few days, weeks, months, or years, it's not very easy to do a good connection. Let's talk about uh, the adhesive preparation composite surface uh, in a late post slide curing period. We can uh, say that composite um, chemical characteristic uh, is absolutely. Uh, uh, is you know the high uh, chemical uh, inertia. There are not any uh, unreacted monomers. There are no any um, frozen free radicals inside. So the composite itself cannot form the adhesive bonds. Uh, and if, if we uh, will try to apply methacrylate based hydrophobic resin filled resin. In the very short perspective of only maybe a few weeks, maybe a maximum few months, uh, we will get a marginal gap. And of course, the, the bonding area will be pigmented and uh, um, this is not uh, absolutely the best way for making corrections. We need to use uh, something something more and the best way is to make uh, sand blasting of the surface uh, this is the view of composite after sand blasting as you can see uh, the the configuration is changed we increase the surface space uh, I told you as a second factor 
very important factor which make, uh, and may increase the adhesive force uh, is the surface space and surface energy. Um, we can increase not two times uh, as on enamel after etching, but we can increase the surface uh, five, six times the depth of micro roundness after using of uh, sandblaster um, is uh, from two up to fifteen microns is quite good. Uh, it's quite nice configuration of the surface uh, and one of the best among um, affecting of cold jet or hydro hydrofluoric acid. And also, uh, but when we um, use sandblaster, we increase uh, uh, the surface area presented by the filler particles because filler particles are more rigid. Uh, and the uh, uh, content on the micro level of composite not very homogeneous. We can find areas uh, with the higher um, uh, presence of um, uh, filler particles and with lower presence, with lower density of filler particles. The uh, feature, the specific of uh, sandblaster affecting is that it removes in the first moments of it affecting uh, on any surface, that areas which are more weakly, uh, mechanically less uh, uh, resistible uh, at first, uh, in the first place, and only then uh, areas which are more resistible mechanically also same start to remove. Uh, that's uh, the reason why uh, sandblaster is very good instrument for final uh, for final uh, preparation of dental tissues or of, of carious cavities. Uh, we can remove uh, um, uh, some, you know, the rest uh, amount of carious affected uh, dentin, uh, carious infected dentin, which is. Uh, has a low uh, rigidity um, and the, the sand blaster will remove these areas first. For, for instance, to explain it to you better, uh, let's just imagine some areas, uh, squat millimeter, uh, and uh, uh, of dentin. And uh, some bit, the biggest part of uh, this surface, hypothetical surface, uh, is presented by um, uh, normal dentin or carious affected dentin, which is quite strong um, uh, and rigid mechanically. And uh, uh, for example, biggest part of it, and only here will be the area presented by carries infected dental which more softer uh, the uh, infection uh, of dentin correlate uh, with uh, uh, rigidity and uh, by sandblast sandblasting uh, is actually a uh, uh, blizzard of uh, particles of aluminum oxide uh, which has the same uh, size, the same speed, the same kinetic energy, uh, and uh, it um, affects the surface. They affect the surface uh, in the um, almost uh, the same number and volume everywhere within this uh, hypothetical squared millimeter. And uh, after some time of affecting, uh, sand particles will uh, remove here in the area of uh, carious infected dentin deeper but in the rest area presented in normal uh, uh, dentin more resistible dentin uh, much less because uh, when particles uh, uh, particle falls uh, into a soft tissue the uh, resulted uh, groove uh, pit will be bigger because it's more soft uh, and when the particle of the same energy uh, falls on uh, more uh, ri rigid, more uh, mechanically uh, perfect uh, surface, 
the the amount of uh, um, uh, reducing uh, will be not very high uh, comparing with the soft area the same actually when we make uh, sound blasting of composites uh, we can find on micro level some areas where the uh, filler presents in less volume and uh, on the nearby squared millimeter or micron will be area with less uh, content on filler particles inside with less percentage uh, and um, in the end, uh, everywhere we uh, use uh, uh, sand blasting, almost everywhere, all the surface will be presented by the filler particles. And filler particles is actually silicon, and we can successfully connect to silicon uh, as it was and as it becomes after sand blasting. We can easily connect to a silicon molecules uh, as well as we make an adhesive connection uh, to porcelain veneer but uh, only by application of an activated silen we cannot connect uh, to uh, um, silicon um, without silen silen uh, consists from a b functional molecules you can see here silicon molecules uh, this is how um, uh, how the uh, silen actually works um, and uh, the molecules uh, of silen has two edges organofunctional group uh, and alkoxy group alkoxy group connects with uh, uh, silicon and organofunctional group uh, located outside may connect uh, with uh, um, with the methacrylate resin and this way we can connect them to each other and we can successfully use the um, uh, as the surface agent uh, and the second bottle which ha have to be used uh, and need to be used uh, methacrylate resin this uh, protocol um, basing on the following uh, um, research here was used uh, three type of composites uh, uh, Filtex Z250, uh, Charges and Solidex uh, with different uh, matrix resin uh, types combined uh, in, uh, which in each composite with different inorganic fillers um, uh, you can see the content different collodial uh, zirconium glass uh, collodial uh, plus uh, mi mixed uh, uh, barium glass and so on ceramic uh, micro fragments and so on so they make in, in numerous uh, um, fragments made of uh, different composites so they cure it in a special curing um, uh, devices with the uh, affecting of uh, high uh, pressure um, atmosphere pressure with uh, with the very intensive uh, light uh, with uh, in the circumstances of a higher uh, surrounding temperature then they affect in different ways the surface of uh, that's uh, uh, pieces uh, of composite uh, connect them to each other with the uh, uh, composite cementum and uh, then make the make the connection areas uh, smaller and uh, just try to break it and uh, make a measurement of uh, the applied F, uh, efforts and energy and uh, there was a few groups the first one uh, first one with um, um, uh, affecting the surface of 600 grit silicon paper second silent priming third one sand blasting with 50 micron uh, aluminum oxide particles for 10 seconds 
will force a group etching with 10% of hydrofluoric acid for 16 for 60 seconds and uh, the fifth group hydro hydrofluoric acid plus silen uh, applying and uh, the group number six sandblasting plus silen and look at the results located lower in uh, in the in the graph uh, z250 105 um, megapascals uh, solidex and chargas also same demonstrate the highest adhesive uh, bone in, uh, in case of sandblasting plus silen actually it two three times higher rather than on enamel and it uh, uh, also uh, uh, proves uh, um, uh, and show the effectiveness clinically I used this protocol many years maybe around eight no, even longer, I would say about 10 years. Uh, this is the protocol of composite surface adhesive preparation after two hours. So before two hours, we just uh, do anything we want, uh, remove some, uh, some part of composite, uh, which is not exactly as we want to see, uh, which uh, have, has to be, uh, um, replaced uh, re we, we remove it with uh, with any instrument we want and then we uh, after removing apply uh, ethanol uh, 96 or 70 percent uh, with uh, wiping uh, which we need to do simultaneously with ethanol affecting then dry it out with the uh, air uh, and apply um, uh, hydrophobic filled methacrylate resin after two hours we need to do it in this way which now uh, on the picture on the screens let's uh, repeat the the sequence sandblasting of the surface intensive mechanical wiping of the composite surface with application of 96 percent of ethanol uh, drying uh, why we need to use ethanol here because sometimes in some possible circumstances uh, uh, ethanol or um, um, sandblasting may cause the uh, smear layer uh, appearing on the surface sometimes depends of the angle uh, of uh, which on which we make a sandblasting and the amount of particles uh, coming from uh, the sand blaster. Uh, uh, for some case, for, for just uh, to you know to um, uh, make sure that uh, we uh, would remove hypothetical uh, smear layer from the surface, uh, we better to use 96% ethanol application with the wiping drying application of silent then. Uh, we better to let the salon dry, dry by itself um, the monomolecular layer will be formed more effective then application of hydrophobic field methacrylate resin or flowable, flowable composite is a possible alternative um, by a thin layer on the surface then we can thoroughly uh, uh, surface uh, spreading it uh, superficially by the airflow. We we don't need to uh, uh, dry something. We just need to um, uh, we just need to spread it with with air on the surface and make a thin layer of the same width uh, everywhere on the composite. Then curing. That's all. And uh, this protocol will allow us to uh, make corrections endlessly uh, uh, in any scale, on any composite, even very old composite or yesterday's composite, doesn't matter. So, 